Hey Pokemon Masters, my name is Bookkeeper Toby and hi, thanks for clicking on my video, welcome. So when I took that one idea I had about Whitney and asking the question why is Whitney from Generation 2 so unbelievably strong? I thought about taking that idea and turning it into a series I knew sooner or later I would have to tackle the topic of Red, arguably the most powerful Pokemon trainer in the whole Pokemon franchise. After all, while there are many famous gym leaders and champions and even rivals, none mo more so exceeds into the world mythology than Red. He is a next level trainer. Whatever a Pokemon Master is, Red is it because Red is you. It is the player character from Generation 1. So this is it. Let's break down exactly why Red is so incredibly strong. And the whole reason that I decided to cover Red today is because this video has been sponsored by DNA and Pokemon Masters and Red has just entered the game. For those of you who don't know what Pokemon Masters is, it's a free to play Pokemon game on mobile, downloadable through the iOS, the Apple Store or or the Google Play Store. You can do that using the link at the top of the description. It is absolutely free to download, free to play. There's a story mode that you take on using three versus three battles using your, your uh, Pokemon Masters and their sync pair. And yeah, of course, right now there is Singasu uh, Red and his Charizard as well as Singasu Elisa and her Rotom, who I will also have to cover in this series in the future. These characters can be unlocked using gems that you find in the game. There are a ton of daily rewards just for logging into the game, as well as characters that can be unlocked just for playing the story. And right Right now, there's this new battle villa mode. You battle through, floor by floor, taking on AI opponents in, in what is the most challenging mode that Pokemon Masters has to offer right now. And while you take nine characters in, any HP that you lose, is you, that remains lost between floors. So uh, good luck to you, Pokemon Masters. And again, you can download it right now using the link at the top of the description. Thank you to DNA and Pokemon Masters for sponsoring this video. And yeah, inspired by Red and Charizard being in the game, let's talk about Red, arguably the most Pokemon mastery of Pokemon. Pokemon Masters. And as well as appearing in Pokemon Masters, Red has appeared in most recently in the Let's Go games as a final boss at the end of the games. Before that, he appeared as his older self in Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon at the Battle Tree. Before that, you can battle Red in the Black and White 2 Worlds tournament, which is pretty cool. Before that, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But the original appearance of Red and the one that I most want to focus on is in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. This is where I believe Red was his most challenging to defeat. And this is where Red kind of gained his status as the ultimate challenge in all of Pokemon. And I think in order to fully articulate why Red is just so difficult to defeat as a trainer, as a challenge, I think you need a little context. Let me take you back. The year is 2000 and Pokemania has been sweeping the entire planet. Pokemon is everywhere and everyone has been playing for about four or five years Pokemon Red, Blue, Green, and Yellow. Their adventure in Kanto with the original 151 Pokemon and they play one character. And this character, the player character, the default name is Red. This is the same character that appears in the Adventures manga and has been adapted into the character of Ash Ketchum on everyone's television screens. People use Red as their entry point into the world of Pokemon during the time that Pokemon was kind of going global. And in the year 2000, a new game appears, Pokemon Gold and Silver, where you take on as a, a, as a new protagonist, you take on the adventure of Johto. Battling new gym leaders with new Pokemon, it's amazing. And just like in the original games, you get to the very end, you battle the Elite Four, and you get the credit scene, and the game is over. Except then it's not. With little to no foreshadowing, suddenly you're told you're allowed to travel to the Kanto region, and you revisit all of those familiar locations. Remember, at this time, Pokemon wasn't something that was necessarily going to go on forever. Gold and Silver were simply sequels to the very critically acclaimed Red, Blue, Yellow, and Green. And so as a sequel, this is kind of cool. Now, after we've completed all of the new stuff, we get to go back, revisit the old stuff, revisit some of those gym leaders and, and battle some of them. See the Kanto region in a different light, battle all the old gym leaders, and maybe some new ones like Janine, for example. I think there's something very satisfying satisfying about this narratively, and this is important as to why Red is so tough to beat. Because once you've finally done all of that and beaten the champion from the old game Blue, you finally are allowed to go to this new location, Mount Silver, a daunting mountain where the most powerful of the most powerful are allowed to train. Heck, it's the only place in the game where you can catch a Larvitar. That should just tell you what kind of power resides within this cave. And you make your way up. You make your way through the cave section, up into the mountainous area, and at the very top, you see someone who looks kind of like you. I mean, at this time, the player characters, they're, you know, the theming is very similar here. He looks just like you and you walk up to him and he says, dot, 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 just staring at you. And you know the thing that's about to happen, the thing that happens when all Pokemon trainers look at each other. 
a battle is about to begin. And the moment the battle starts and you see that full character sprite, you know exactly who that trainer was. It was you in the last game. You're finally facing off against yourself. It is the perfect final boss for a sequel of any game and, and that level of, oh my goodness, this is really happening. What am I going to do? How am I going to face this challenge? Is something that contributes to, uh, especially if you're a younger player, the, uh, I guess, fear that you feel, the frustration that you feel in battling and the, the tension in the fight. So that's the build-up, that's the setup, And now we talk about the strategy. Why is Red technically so hard to beat? And we start with something that we see in a lot of powerful trainers. First of all, he's got hold of Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur on his team. And that might not seem like a lot, but when you're playing through your Johto adventure, you don't get for Alligator, Meganium, and Typhlosion. You have to choose one and construct a team around that. That means that whatever starter you chose, which is likely to be your most powerful Pokemon, Red has an answer to it. On top of that, Red starts with Pikachu, which is kind of a gimmicky thing. It is the highest level Pokemon that a trainer uses pretty much in any game. I mean, other than like some of the battle facilities where you're off against level 100 Pokemon or any gimmicky thing, in terms of like an actual story, an actual boss, this is the highest level Pokemon in any game. Which is fair enough because its stats are going to be a little bit low. But right here, with this type coverage of Pikachu, Venus, or Charizard Blastoise, the Pokemon that you would have chosen in red, blue, and yellow, we're pretty much dealing with any of the generic Pokemon that you would have been gifted throughout your Johto adventure. The Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile lines, uh, the Shuckle that you get gifted, the Pseudo Wudo that you would have encountered. The Red Gyarados is quad weak to Pikachu, so you've got to make sure you're playing your Pokemon in the right order. Now granted, there are some Pokemon like Togetic or Snorlax that you're guaranteed to encounter on your adventure that he doesn't have any type of advantage against, but then neither do you particularly with those Pokemon. On top of that, many of his Pokemon using the elemental moves that are the strongest versions of them. So for example, Pikachu is using Thunder, uh, Blastoise is using Hydro Pump, Venusaur has Giga Drain and Solar Beam, so they have incredible moves. But on top of that, these moves can complement each other. The Rain Dance on Blastoise complements Pikachu's Thunder, uh, the Sunny Day on Venusaur complements Venusaur's Solar Beam and Charizard's Fire moves. This manipulation of the weather for the bosses in Pokemon is actually some high level play for the AI. And on top of that, just as backup, we've got a psychic type Pokemon, an Espeon, and you have to remember back in generation two, the psychic type was still pretty strong. They had introduced the dark type as a counter, but a lot of the dark Pokemon like Sneasel and Houndour and uh, Murkrow as well, I think a lot of these Pokemon weren't really available until the Kanto portion of the game. So you didn't have long to train with them if you wanted a counter to a psychic Pokemon. And on top of that, Red has a Snorlax. Snorlax has some of the highest HP and high defense in the game. Blastoise has incredibly high defense. Espeon has incredibly high speed and special attack. Charizard has high special attack and I think also so speed maybe. We are talking about Pokemon that within the generation two games are in the top percentages. They're always in the top sort of 25, 30 or, or, of a particular stat. All apart from Pikachu, which as I say, is the highest level possible. And on top of that, Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, these are Pokemon that you haven't really had much chance to interact with within the Gen 2 games. Granted, if you remember them from Gen 1, then you'll know their typing, and that's always wonderful. And it's not like there's not counters for these Pokemon, but these are Pokemon that you've spent an entire game only encountering maybe once throughout the journey. Again, it just sort of adds to that intimidation factor. So we have intimidation, we have a fantastic array of moves, some very high stats, and some very high leveled Pokemon. And on that last point, I I think that's why Red is truly the most difficult. I've already mentioned his Pikachu, a level 81 monstrosity. Now, luckily his other Pokemon are a slightly lower level, but again, their stats are much, much better to compensate. The lowest is Espeon at 73, Snorlax is 75, and the three Kanto starters are level 77. And it's the end of two regions, so you would think your team would be up to par, except this is Johto. And this is something I've mentioned in a couple of the other videos uh, pertaining to this. In Johto, the leveling system is out of whack. By the time you're finishing the first half of the game, uh, you're battling Pokemon that are in their level 20s. I'm talking about the final rocket hideout. Some of the Pokemon in that base are in their 20s. Lance's Dragonite doesn't exceed level 50, and that is the highest uh, level for, for kind of the champion of that portion of the game, which kind of tells you that your Pokemon shouldn't really be exceeding the mid 40s to maybe 50 at a push. And that is actually about right. 
but the problem is that it isn't really half a game. They definitely managed to flesh it out in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, but the original Gold and Silver, the Kanto region isn't so much a region, so much as it is just a series of corridors connecting gym battles. This is to say, when you look at things like Viridian Forest, it's not so much a forest, so much as it is like just a hedge maze, connecting some towns together, connecting a few gym battles together, some of which I think you can do in a number of different orders. So the levels don't escalate in any direct way. It's not a journey where you're expected to go from level 50 to level 100. It's more just like, and now revisit some of the favorites as gym leaders. I mean, unlike Johto, where it's a whole adventure, you can do Kanto in like a dozen battles, maybe like 20 battles at that most, which doesn't leave a lot of room for experience growth from where you were at Lance in your mid 40s. I mean, Blue's highest level Pokemon is level 58. Red's lowest level Pokemon is level 73. 58 to 73. That is a big jump and is going to require a lot of grinding before you're even able, even really ready to take on Red. And that, in my opinion, is why Red is so hard to defeat. That said, it's also why he's so cool to play in Pokemon Masters, which again, thank you to DNA and Pokemon Masters for sponsoring this video. Click the link at the top of the description to take you to the Google Play or iOS store, and you can download the game today and get Red while he's in it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all of you who are leaving comments and leaving likes. Let me know what you think about this. Who should I cover next? Every time you leave a comment, it helps YouTube algorithm just push it out so that more people see it. And uh, when more people see my videos, I'm always very, very grateful and hopefully you will get something you enjoy. So thank you for watching. And of course, Saw High Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Fur Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. And a massive thank you to those of you supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of the month, the Nerd Therapist and Gunner Clovis. Thank you.